welcome to today's webinar. Today's event is entitled Behind the Scenes of Alliance Group's Continuous Peer-to-Peer -Peer Feedback Program, hosted by SAP Insider, sponsored by SAP Success Factors, partnering with CMOS Cloud. And now on to our presentation, Behind the Scenes of Alliance Group's Continuous Peer-to-Peer -Peer Feedback Program. Discussing today's topic will be Goran Rice, Head of Customer Success at CMOS Cloud. We also have Sarah Hess and Jennifer Gillette of Alliance. But first, we'll hear from Goran. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I will start my presentation by just quickly introducing CMOS as a company and then talking a little bit about uh, the background and how we exist uh, inside of the SAP ecosystem. Uh, then move to our portfolio of the solutions and talking a little bit about feedback before handing it to Jennifer, who will talk a little bit more about uh, Allianz experience. So CMOS is an independent software company. We focus on design, development, and implementation uh, and technical support of sophisticated enterprise solutions. We are a global company, uh, which exists a little bit over three decades, and we account to a little bit over 300 employees today. Uh, we are working with customers of all sizes, right, from SMBs to large enterprises, such as Allianz Group here on the call, uh, but also SAP, uh, who serve also as our customer, not only our partner. And uh, speaking of which, uh, CMOS is a gold partner of SAP and is one of the first vendors who started developing applications in this SAP ecosystem. Uh, we are in the SAP ecosystem for a little bit over four years today. Uh, we are also serving as a co-innovative partner, right, as part of the Pashi Group, uh, and we are working really closely with SAP's product and go-to-market teams on basically where we craft products uh, and develop and uh, kind of build them to complement the overall uh, success factors offering. Uh, next slide is going to basically show you just a little bit about how we coexist in the in the SAP uh, ecosystem. Uh, basically, SAP has uh, built a platform called SAP Cloud Platform, uh, which basically coexists next to the success factors offering. And most of you uh, attending the call today, I'm assuming, have heard about the success factors of core HR products and the talent uh, offering. But eventually, when you come to a point that you want to extend that capability of the core HR provided by success factors, you're basically standing in front of few options, right? Uh, I would say the normal ones would be working with SAP, uh, with their product teams, and asking them basically to extend those uh, specific modules. Uh, but then you also have uh, an ability to do that on your own, right? And for that purpose, uh, SAP has created the SAP Cloud Platform, which is basically a platform built out of infrastructure services, data, database services, and also uh, development uh, uh, microservices, so you could start developing your own applications. And I would say the best analogy to this would be kind of the iPhone uh, and the iOS uh, ecosystem, where you basically, if you buy an iPhone, which doesn't have any applications inside of it, it really doesn't kind of, it, it doesn't have any worth into it. Um, and yes, you as a customer of iPhones, you could go and potentially build an application, but then that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so SAP has also provided an app center, right, which is basically a marketplace where you can log in and you can basically consume already uh, fully crafted and created apps. Uh, we are one of the partners, there's around uh, 300 uh, today, in the, especially for success factors. Uh, I would point out that CMOS is uh, one of the partners that is really using only SAP technology. We are uh, developing all of our solutions using the SAP Cloud Platform, uh, and uh, due to that, we have, uh, we have really tight integration with, uh, with success factors, uh, and we basically fully integrate with all of the success, factor, success factors modules. Uh, our portfolio of solutions uh, you'll be able to see in the next screen. Uh, basically, uh, we have currently in the App Center six solutions. Uh, Job Points is our peer-to-peer -peer recognition and reward solution. Uh, feedback is the continuous feedback and insight solution, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, survey Rocks is a full-blown survey application. And then we have also Boardflow, which is a project project management and uh, team communication solution where basically teams can uh, collaborate on their projects. Healthane is a health and wellness solution where basically your HR teams can start uh, health and wellness activities in the company and basically create competitions that will be rewarded 
uh, of course, through job points. That's the idea to basically have everything interconnected behind the scenes. And last but not least would be Total Rewards Hub, which is uh, a dashboard and umbrella that incorporates everything around compensation uh, in your company. So your employees would have kind of a one-stop shop for anything compensational from their pay stubs, vacation days, and uh, um, stocks, or basically anything uh, from compensation standpoint. Uh, our employee engagement suite uh, was built uh, for extending the investment with success factors and to support multiple HR programs. Uh, today we're going to be talking about feedback. Feedback is an interesting solution that basically facilitates uh, any type of a continuous feedback in a company. Right? Uh, we believe that uh, feedback is uh, kind of the core piece uh, uh, of the process. Uh, however, uh, it facilitates multiple use cases and it can facilitate multiple use cases depending on how you integrate the solution with success factors. Um, all of our solutions, including feedback, fully integrates with success factors. Um, I would say one common use case is the one that you're going to hear also today from Allianz is uh, basically integrating it with performance and goals and facilitating CPM oriented use cases, but nevertheless, the solution can facilitate variety of use cases going from uh, mentoring if uh, integrated with succession and uh, um, and also for talent uh, and skill development in the company uh, depending on how you integrate the solution. Uh, the solutions are fully integrated also with the SSO integration with success factors, which basically means that um, your employees will really ha have an easy time logging into the, into the solution. So practically when they log into success factors, they would be logging in with our solution. The solution is all of them are fully consumed via any uh, any device. It can be a mobile device or a tablet device or a desktop device, right? Uh, the UI is really fun and simple to use. We are following SAP's practices uh, while developing, using the Fiori uh, technology behind the scenes in HTML5. Uh, so the, the, the products are really fun to use, uh, and we have really good numbers in terms of adoption with our customers. Uh, the system provides not only a fun experience experience for the end users. There's also advanced administration page, uh, sort of say a backend solution uh, where the HR can log in and basically manage all aspects of the solution. Uh, I would say that feedback as a solution is coming to facilitate a variety uh, of scenarios. Uh, and the main scenarios would be uh, manager to employee, uh, asking to be evaluated or self-initiation, self uh, peer-to-peer, uh, feedback, which is basically employee to employee, and then of course employee, uh, anonymous way to a manager. While we also provide uh, within the solution an ability uh, for uh, employees uh, uh, to respond one to each other, right? So through technological means, they would be able to have a dialogue and a conversation, and have a full 360. Uh, capability within the solution. Uh, of course, depending on each one of the customers and how they want to uh, consume the product, uh, portions of the product can be turned on and turned off. Uh, one more uh, kind of big piece of the solution is how do we facilitate the managers in the company? Uh, we do have the administrative uh, backend solution which provides a variety of reports and is really robust, but that serves the admins and the HR uh, the solution also provides um, a, variety, a variety of reports for the managers in the company so they could see basically how their employees are being evaluated and how this dialogue is working inside of the company. Uh, trying to basically change the paradigm of um, the once a year feedbacks, uh, which are quite common in companies, but basically facilitate uh, with the technological means uh, the employees in the company to communicate, to have a dialogue, and then the managers to see what is the dialogue so when they do meet uh, either once a year or twice a year, they would have a much more meaningful dialogue uh, because there is uh, quite a lot of uh, input and data behind the scenes. And at this point, I will uh, pass my presentation to uh, Jennifer uh, from Allianz. Uh, Jennifer? Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, my name is Jennifer Gillette. I am responsible for talent management and development in our headquarters of the Allianz Group. I'm based out of Munich, Germany, and um, I'm one of the project leads um, in this project. Uh, this project is a global project, 
and I'm working together with a colleague. Her name is Sarah Hess, and I'll let Sarah introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Hess, and I'm working with Jen on this project from Allianz Technologies' uh, point of view. We are the shared service provider for all things IT, and I specifically work in the central functions area for um, Allianz Group, and we run mostly HR applications, and therefore this was a perfect fit for us to explore some the feedback realm. Okay, um, can we go to the next? Perfect. Okay, um, what I would like to first share with you is a little bit um, about our journey. Um, Allianz, uh, around two and a half years ago, um, had a change in leadership um, at the CEO space. So we have a, um, a new chairman who came on board. His name is Oliver Beta. And one of the first things that Oliver did was to engage with the senior leaders across the group to define um, the next strategy for our group. And um, the strategy has two pillars. One is heritage. Heritage is really about the things that we are already doing in an excellent way. And the other part is renewal. What are the different things that we need to do in order to ensure uh, our success in the future? And our renewal agenda, um, as you can see here in this uh, circle, has five different elements. There is true customer centricity, digital by default, technical excellence, growth engines, and inclusive meritocracy. And within the space of inclusive meritocracy is really um, the space where we have tried to define the culture, the global culture that we need to have as the base um, in our organization in order for us to be able to achieve our renewal agenda on a global, uh, globally. And a big cornerstone of the inclusive meritocracy in the corporate culture that we want and need to have is around having a culture of feedback. Um, therefore, there was a design thinking team um, around two years ago who actually came up with the idea. It was a group of millennials, and they came up with the idea of us uh, developing a feedback app. And it was through this project team that we came in contact with Samos, and we decided that we would um, try the app, the Feedback Points app, and um, we are now running in the midst of a global pilot where we have um, around five or 600 users globally in different areas of the company, from board members to uh, people who have only been in the company for a year, and we are all using this feedback app. Um, I think that what uh, the reason that we decided to do this was uh, twofold. One had to do with company culture. The second was about bringing digital more into the HR space. Um, and um, we have wanted to actually see some of the benefits that we could get out of this. Some of those are around, um, as I mentioned, digital in our culture. It's aligned with our strategy. We also wanted to um, change the way that we are giving feedback. And we also wanted to encourage peer-to-peer. -peer. And this is something that you can see on the next slide. In this slide, you can see um, we have wanted to just give you an overview of how we are trying to make feedback count in our organization. So if you think about feedback as being a muscle, um, if you are only giving feedback at very scheduled planned times of the year, like the mid-year review, like um, after a 360, or in a multi-rater, uh, which we use in our performance management, these are tend to be very painful, deep-dive feedback sessions where people are usually getting feedback only from their manager, and sometimes there have been issues where they haven't, where, you know, they uncover things that they didn't know of before. So let's say there was a certain behavior that they have been exhibiting for six months. They only find it, find out about this um, during a moment, during one of these planned um, feedback sessions. 
And for me, this is when I link this back to a muscle, is like um, it's those times when you go to the gym after you haven't been there for six months and you do a really tough workout and afterwards you really have muscle pain. And what we want to do is to bring in more continuous feedback. So we have the feedback app. We are also using a topic of um, a new construct of feedback dialogues to, um, that should happen now on a monthly basis between um, managers and employees. And we also have leadership circles, which is a peer-to-peer -peer feedback. I think that one of the things around the feedback app which really struck us is um, the peer-to-peer -peer piece, also that you can give feedback to groups. So it's not just between two people. Um, and this is something that uh, the pilot populations that we've um, identified within the group um, have really appreciated that, um, that we are now seeing more peer-to-peer -peer feedback um, and also feedbacks to groups. So this is something which was really new for us. Um, I'm going to now hand over to Sarah because she is going to take us through um, a little bit more about the pilot and also then um, she's going to do a demo I believe of our app so that you guys can see exactly what it looks like and um, then afterwards we are looking forward to your questions. So yes, as Jen mentioned, I am going to give you a little bit more of an overview of first of all a little bit technically and then also really from a journey perspective how we went from the idea to having an application and launching it. So um, what you can see in the slide at the moment, it really did take us a while to kind of hone in on which functionalities we want to have and what exactly they should cover. We had the luxury of having had the design thinking project that Jen mentioned before, which kind of gave us an indication already in interviews with people of functionalities and kind of in general use cases that we were, should be covering that we're currently not covering. So that was definitely a really, really good start for us. But um, another thing that was definitely a key player is we were going with a global application for multiple countries, different operating entities, and each are kind of a special animal of their own, which meant we had to do some coordination with some governing bodies in the company, which a little bit complicated the process. But in the end, um, so far, we have been live now for over six months. We just got the second approval to extend the pilot. We have eight different operating entities in about 12 different countries, and we're onboarding users on a regular basis. So the number you see here is from about a month ago. We're at the point almost at 600 now. And um, so this is really progressing really well from a pilot perspective. Why are we doing a pilot is at the moment we want to test the cases, the functionalities, and just make sure that what should we cover for each individual country. Obviously, we would like to have a standard solution, but we just want to see what works in our culture and what doesn't work. So that's why we're going with the pilot approach. Okay, so now what I would like to show you is just a quick look into um, what we've been doing in more of a, a numbers perspective. So what you can definitely see here might become a little bit more clear once you've seen the demo because this is already honing in into some of our functionalities. Um, basically what we've done is we've been doing an evaluation of the pilot continuously throughout the whole duration. So we started with onboarding interviews, we did midterm interviews, and we're, we're keeping this process up as we go along. And um, some things that you can see here is these are some dashboards that we can take out of our um, so-called reporting center, or that's at least what we call it, where you can see the, um, so the graph on the right will show you kind of the development of transactions. We have it broken down into wow points sent, feedback sent, and then also um, feedback requests sent. So you can see kind of the development here. And then what we also have is um, our overall star rating and um, some other figures that we do. So this is just kind of a snippet so you can see how we evaluate our usage. And then the next slide, what it shows you really is kind of how we went about um, gathering feedback. So as I mentioned before, we've, we've had onboarding interviews, we've had midterm interviews, we've also used the feedback app, sending mass requests 
to the population. And what you can see also is some snippets of um, what people have said. So overall, just to give you kind of the big picture, people really like our application, so they find it easy to use, they find it intuitive, they like the idea of being of giving feedback just for giving feedback and letting people know what's going on. Um, and overall, you know, they've been really happy. What we have experienced culture-wise is that Allianz just has a very particular culture, and usually these kinds of things come accompanied with a process. So this is kind of what we're working on at the moment on how to really take this pilot and put it into the bigger picture for the employees. Okay, so this slide um, takes you into a quick view of the functionalities that we have. I did mention it before, we do have um, giving and receiving feedback, obviously. We have the opportunity to rate feedback, which we've done with feedback on the feedback functionality. I'll show you that in a minute. It sounds a little weird, but when you see it, it's, it becomes pretty clear. And then what we also have is the wow points. So those are our essential transactional-based functionalities. We also have some overview-based functionalities that we use for, for kind of personal evaluation that you'll see when we start the demo as well. The last thing I want to share with you is kind of how we measure success. I did tease on this topic a little bit in my previous slides. Um, essentially, we do measure participation. So we measure how often do people use it. We've actually also attached Google Analytics to the platform, showing us when people use it, what kind of devices they use. And um, also what we've evaluated is for what kind of use cases this is used, because essentially that's what the pilot is for, to investigate do we use it for positive, constructive feedback, what kind of a scenario is this really useful for. And um, as of now, six months in, we say it's mostly for positive feedback. So you can see this also in the star distribution. You see one to five stars. We're definitely more in the realm of four to five stars. The three, two, and one are used definitely less frequent than the others. But what we've also seen is that um, when you do request feedback from, from a colleague, they're also inclined to give you a so-called I wish component, which we see as you know giving you some, some indicators on how you can improve potentially. Okay, so um, this would be everything that I wanted to share with you content-wise. I would now like to move on into showing you the application itself. So in a minute or so, you should be able to see the application. I hope it, it's, it's visible for everyone. Yeah, looks good. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm showing you at the moment is our desktop version of the application. For our users, they can use this from any kind of device. So we haven't limited it to company network for the moment, but as soon as they have credentials and they're activated for the application, they're able to sign in from any kind of device, so mobile, desktop, iPad, iPhone, whatever, Android, you name it, they can use it. And um, what we have seen in the Google Analytics is our company is mostly desktop driven, so we do have people definitely that use it on their mobile devices, but the desktop is about 60% of what people use. Okay, so um, I would just walk you through our main functionality and kind of show you what our rationale behind this was. So the first thing I would like to show you is giving feedback or wow points. So these are our two main um, transactions that we have if you are initiating the feedback process, so asking for feedback or, or giving feedback or giving wow points. Um, the main difference for us is feedback really forces you to give a constructive component, so to speak. So for this demo, I will take Jennifer, my colleague here next to me, as my um, recipient for the feedback. And then I can move on to add a message. And here you see this is how we've, we've went about this. So feedback is based on an event or an action. So take for the example demo of the app. And then we have the I like and the I wish component. So the idea here is I really liked that you took the time to show all functionalities. And then I wish, for instance, that you had given us the opportunity 
or questions. This is a simple example, obviously, but um, this is kind of the idea behind it. You will first state something that you really liked about this action, and then if you have a point that you would like to give for improvement, you can use the I wish component. The next step is providing an overall rating on the feedback. As I mentioned before, we have stars. So you can see you have here five stars, which would mean excellent, or if you selected one, it would equal to being a poor feedback that you're giving on the overall event. So the, the logic behind it is you think, on the demo of the app, I would say overall it was excellent, and then you would select your five stars. The last step that we have allocated to almost every transaction in our application is selecting a people attribute. As Jen mentioned before, we do have our overarching um, strategic agendas, and the people attributes are part of this. And here we have the four that we have selected for our company. And um, each transaction is also linked back to one of the people attributes. So in the case of demo of the app, I would select customer and market excellence because that's where I can relate it to. And then I can send the feedback. So this kind of shows you the simple, really only three steps that you have to go through to send this feedback. And that completes the step of sending feedback. As I mentioned before, we also have the wow points. Um, just to show you this a little bit faster, we have a scale of 25 to 500, and each threshold signifies a different type of award. So you can see here, 25 points would equal the award good job. If you went to select 250 points, you would get to the award game changer, and for instance, 500 would indicate that this award means it's inspirational. Um, we also have always put some examples because what we found is that people need some hints on um, how to use these awards because they're new. So for instance, in this case, they would know that if the action that they're thinking about would really prove measurable business outcome, then you can use the award inspirational. Okay, so I will take 25 points and I will send this to Jen just to again show you the process. What you can also see here is that wow points are a lot quicker. So this basically selecting a people attribute, that could be it, but we do have the option of giving some context and this is actually used very frequently. So people would now say demo of the app and then people attribute and send. So you can see this is faster, it's really focused on positive recognition, whereas when we give feedback, we also ask for a constructive component. Okay, the next one um, is the ask for feedback functionality. Here, again, you can select one or multiple recipients. So in my case, I'm just, for an example, I'm gonna select my colleague Roman as well. So you can see here down here, I've selected more than one recipient. The way we've put it at the moment is there's no limit to how many people you can send it to. And then similar to before, again, the request would be event-driven. So I would be asking for feedback on the demo of the app. And here I can specify my request if I choose to. So please give me feedback on how understandable the demo was. And here I can select the people attribute, but I don't have to. This is the only transaction in the application that we have not made mandatory to link to a feedback people attribute. I will select one anyway, <laughs> and then I can send the request. Okay, so the last functionality that I would really like to show you is surrounding the feedback on the feedback that I mentioned before. Down here in the My Feedback and the Sent Feedback tile, you can have an overview of all of your incoming and outgoing feedback transactions. And this is also where you find the opportunity to give people feedback on the feedback that you've received from them. So if I click into My Feedback, you can see this is a huge um, collection of all of the feedbacks that I've received so far. And some of these already have a smiley. The smiley essentially is our feedback on the feedback functionality. To show you this, I will take here this example of my colleague Monica, who sent me a feedback. And here I now have the option to tell her how helpful and constructive I felt her feedback was. So you can see I really have an I wish component really telling me how they would like me to improve on this demo. So for me, this is really helpful and constructive. And I can select a happy smiley and save it to this transaction. 
In return, this now means that Monica in her sent feedbacks can see what I have given her as feedback on the feedback. To show you this, I'll go here into the sent feedbacks, and you can see an example of here where my colleague Jennifer has given me a happy smiley on the feedback that I sent her. So I can keep track as well on how my feedbacks were perceived. So these are the functionalities surrounding sending and receiving feedback. We have two additional ones, which are the rating and the ranking functionality. On the rating tile here, you can see in the star is my aggregated score over all of the transactions. So I have an average score of 4.2 for the feedback that I have received. If I click on this tile, I, it takes me into a, a breakdown by people attribute. And again, if you click on the respective people attribute, it takes you into the overview of the feedbacks on this people attribute. This can really allow you to see, oh, see for me, I'm, I only have a 4.1 score in customer and market excellence, whereas the others, I have a better score, so maybe if I review my feedback, it can give me an indication on what I need to work on. Finally, the ranking is um, truly a transactional-based overview. Um, currently, we are investigating some use cases to use this, for instance, for contests that we can do offline or just general um, overviews of how active people are. What you see is you either have a um, senders or receivers um, overview of the top 15. We also have an opt-out functionality for people that potentially would not want to be visible here. And we also have a filter functionality by country and company if the cohorts, what we call them, want to refine their views. Okay, so um, this would be everything I want to show you about the feedback app. Maybe just one quick view into the reporting center that I mentioned before. So since I'm an admin, I have the opportunity to see the reporting center here. And um, just to give you a quick glimpse of what we're doing here, you can see these are all of our transactions. We have a map. We also have um, the opportunity to break down into reports. And we also have um, the filter functionality. So this is just um, to show you basically what you potentially can do with this reporting center. Okay, so this would be everything from my side now. I hope that this was understandable for everyone and you could follow the, the presentation. And I think I would hand over to Steve now to go into the Q&A. Okay, thanks very much. Excellent presentation and demo. And now on to the question and answer portion of our event. And it uh, looks like we have a number of great questions already, so thank you very much. Uh, let's get started here with a question from John, uh, who would like to know, is this solution prepackaged or custom-specific for Allianz? Who would like to take uh, this? So should I take that, uh, Steve? This is Goran. Absolutely. Great. That'd be great. Okay, so first, great question. Uh, the solution is uh, highly customizable. It, it, however, it comes uh, with, so, so to say, a vanilla format where you can take uh, uh, the solution as it comes, right? And then uh, you can change it to facilitate your specific business process. Uh, the idea, uh, I think uh, uh, Jennifer and Sarah were talking about it. They mentioned quite a lot of times uh, the culture uh, and how this basically facilitates and kind of supports the culture thing in the company. Uh, I would say one very important topic about the solution is that we are not trying to force our customers uh, to change their ways. Uh, we are trying to kind of accommodate uh, through technology and support their ways. Uh, so the solution really uh, is highly flexible to changes. Uh, Jennifer was talking and, and showing through the screens. Uh, she was talking basically about the people attributes that you would choose uh, after submitting a feedback. Those people attributes, um, if I wasn't kind of clear in the beginning of uh, the integration with success factors, those attributes would be basically people's attributes that are assigned in success factors. Uh, let's say in case of performance and goals and uh, you would have competencies or behaviors, uh, whatever you would be managing for that specific employee, those specific behaviors will be showing up uh, inside of feedback. So it will be fully aligned to kind of what you're trying to achieve in success factors because the beginning 
of the process would be, in this case, at least in this specific use case, would be in success factors and would finish in success factors. Just the overall uh, dialogue between the peers in the company would be done through our application while trying to really facilitate uh, the, the ease of use and everything. I would uh, share my screen for a second just to show you kind of a different environment without showing the, uh, I'm hoping that you're able to see my screen. Without sharing uh, the other customer environment, but this is showing uh, basically how the solution first can look and feel different, right? And how the give feedback process, for example, can be quite different from what you've seen with uh, with Allianz, right? So here, I'm going to choose myself, right? This time I'm logged in as a manager uh, to the system. I can choose one person or multiple persons. I can choose behaviors now at the beginning of the process, right? Not necessarily at the end of the process, but at the beginning of the process. And then when I go to the next phase, I'm basically having a little bit different type of an approach. And this is, for example, the flexibility that the solution will provide you. So yes, it does come uh, with something pre-built, but we really kind of support our customers to change the solution to facilitate and uh, to, to kind of fulfill their needs. In this case, as you can see, really, again, it's following the same practice. It's going to be an uh, event, right? It's going to be, I don't know, project A. Here, uh, instead of having the five stars, we have if it's, this is a strength or a development area, these are the two kind of toggles. And then I'm writing a feedback that is no I wish and I like. And the rationale behind this is that the HR team uh, was trying to basically a little bit run away from the uh, traditional uh, CPM process of rating people. Uh, they thought, uh, and this is a manufacturing company, and they thought that this might kind of uh, push something uh, negative uh, to their employees. And because this is a quite of a big of a culture change in the company, uh, they thought that uh, let's you know move away from the stars and let's do development and strength areas, which would uh, they believe and they hope uh, will be kind of better um, 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 consumed by the by the end user employees because adoption of the solution is not less important um, than creating the solution. You want all of your employees to be and start using the solution, right? And I'm going to write the feedback as you can see. I'm going to go to the next page. And here, basically, I'm going step by step filling up the process, right? Again, a little bit different uh, and facilitating and kind of fulfilling the customer's uh, request. I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, Jennifer has a question here. Uh, how flexible is the solution to changes? Yeah, so I think we were just now talking about that. It's uh, it's it's quite flexible to to facilitate specific uh, use cases. Uh, this use case that we are touching here uh, with Allianz is a CPM oriented use case. Uh, I would say it's a little bit go towards uh, CPM. Uh, however, we are working with a variety of customers. One of the customers uh, had a, a need, which was basically for their employees to be able to uh, basically evaluate their skills say basically, what am I really good at? This is uh, this is the development company, 35,000 employees. I would say 70% of that is developers. Uh, so one use case was uh, first the employees to be able to say what are they really good at, uh, their managers to evaluate that evaluation, uh, but then also for the employees to say what they would, would like to develop to. Right, So I don't know, I'm good at Java and I'm good at uh, C Sharp, but I would like to develop into kind of more modern languages as Python. And this is a core thing for a development company. Uh, so we positioned uh, feedback as a solution to that, which is, again, totally different use case, totally different process, nothing CPM oriented uh, to facilitate, the, facilitate that specific need. Okay, and how has the uh, feedback been from the end users? Um, I think uh, maybe Jennifer and Sarah can better address that question. The question was, um, how has the feedback been uh, for the end users? Um, I think that um, it has actually been very positive for them. One of the things, one of the decisions that we have made is to not link the feedback app to our performance management um, systems uh, and processes for the moment. We've decided to use this more from a development point of view. 
And so if we see, um, if you recall from the demo presentation where Sarah showed the ranking of the stars, one of the things that we and also the end users really appreciate about this is that by seeing the aggregate uh, score that they've received, um, they can then actively talk about development with their boss, with their peers. They can also self-reflect on this and then try um, to initiate some actions uh, in order to improve in one people attribute or the other. And then over time, they would be able to see what is the impact uh, you know, over time, but with a, in a more consistent way, they would be able to see what is the impact um, on those changes. Uh, and on those development actions that they've tried. So I think from that point of view, um, on the HR personal development side, it has been um, very positive. Um, I would say um, on the other side for end users, one of the critical factors that we have seen is about um, the size and also the activity of a particular population. So we do have some groups that are very small, let's say cohorts that are quite small but very active, and therefore the exchange is regular and consistent. We also have other cohorts which are very large, however they're not really uh, working and interacting with another on the app as frequently as they could be, and therefore there is some frustration of some users who would like to use and exchange feedback and wow points more on the app. However, the folks in their cohort are not as active. So I would say those are probably two different um, scenarios we've seen. Um, Sarah, would you like to comment on any other um, end user experiences that you've observed? So um, in these detailed end user surveys that we do, we ask um, on the one hand, obviously the functionality. So functionality wise, we get some feedback that they would, for instance, for specific use cases, prefer additional people attributes, which is obviously more of a strategic topic. Um, but in general, from the functionality spectrum for our use case, they have been very satisfied. Um, we do get some comments regarding accessibility because the way we've set up the pilot currently is a little bit more complicated. Um, I would say for most people that's probably not the case if they go for the direct um, um, interlinked way with um, success factors. But um, yeah, the feedback overall has been really positive. People appreciate the app the way we've designed it. But what they also um, do say, what I mentioned before, is they would like the overarching process. They would like it to be embedded more. And that ties into what Jen said. If we have active coordinators for the individual cohort and its significant size, there is a reason to give feedback. And there are people that you can give feedback to. So essentially, that's what it lives and dies off of. OK, great. Uh, Sa uh, Sandrine has a question here. Uh, did you face any specific difficulties uh, with uh, transparent feedback uh, as not, uh, maybe not everybody appreciated that, depending on the culture? Well, um, to be honest with you, I think we, uh, if you look at our figures, I think we only have actually one or two transactions where the feedback was critical. Um, what we see, the app is mostly being used to give a very positive feedback. Um, and the feedback that we've received from our different users is that when it is something which is more critical, a little bit more where, yeah, where it is more critical, they prefer to actually have these discussions um, face to face. I think one of the positive aspects um, of using the app is that um, I would, I've been with a company for 15 years, and I would say that um, before um, this new strategy and the renewal agenda and also the people attributes, probably those critical discussions would not have happened. But now that we um, are doing some activities group-wide with the feedback app, with the leadership circles, as well as with the feedback dialogues, these critical discussions are happening more real time than not happening at all. So I think this has been a very positive um, 
uh, yeah, re- result of, of, of actually the app. And I, and I do truly believe that it is, it is linked more closely to the app because um, people are thinking about giving feedback on a regular basis now more often than they had done before. Um, does, I hope that answers her question. I have one thing to, to add to that. Um, so I do the demo session, so essentially I get to experience um, most of the users. And um, since you brought up the, the topic of culture, I, from certain companies in certain countries, I do get the question why we do not have an anonymous feedback feature. Mm-hmm. This is something that um, specific cultures and countries have asked for. Um, we have decided not to do this for various reasons, one being we, don't, we didn't have a process in place on how you could report um, potentially inappropriate feedback, and we wanted to make this pilot more about identifying use cases rather than having to deal with you know, compliance backlashes. So that's um, one reason why we didn't use anonymous feedback, and then also we have an open and two-way, open, honest, two-way communication principle in the company, and um, anonymous feedback would not necessarily be conducive to that, so we feel like feedback should be something that you express honestly, and then it always depends on how you express it. So that's why having your name attached to it should be okay. Um, But your point definitely is true that in some cultures they do desire for an anonymous feedback functionality, which we are not offering at the moment. Okay, great. Uh, A couple more questions here. Uh, To which modules can you integrate within uh, success factors? Uh, So I will address that question. Uh, All of our solutions are integrating with all modules. Uh, In feedback case, I would say the most common one that we are getting requests would be for performance and goals. Uh, that's the most common one, but then uh, could serve and initiate other use cases. Uh, and we are working with some customers. Those are not live projects yet uh, with succession and uh, with uh, just simply integrating with uh, Employee Central, uh, but any module. Okay, thank you. Final question here we have, uh, could feedback serve other use cases except the one shown in the Allianz demo? Yes, so I think we already addressed that question, uh, Steve, so we were talking about the variety of use cases that could be addressed. Okay, very good. Then that looks like that's all the time we have for today's um, webinar. And we want to thank you all for attending today's event. Um, behind the scenes of Allianz Group's continuous peer-to-peer feedback program. We have our guests, Goran Rice of CMOS Cloud, Sarah Hess, and Jennifer Gillette of Allianz. We want to thank you for your time, and have a great day.